Have you ever dreamed of flying nonstop from Europe to Asia without any stops, or simply want a more comfortable long-haul flight experience? That dream is about to become a reality as Airbus prepares to deliver the first A321 XLR. With its impressive range and cutting-edge technology, the airplane promises to change the face of civil aviation. So, which airlines will be its first customers? Can the XLR help airlines usher in a new era of long-haul narrow-body travel? Let's find out in today's episode. Airbus announced in May that the A321 XLR was in the final certification phase of its readiness for service. However, the process has taken longer than initially expected due to regulatory issues. And finally, after a long wait and delay, the European aircraft manufacturer is set to deliver the first A321 XLR to Spanish airline Iberia, according to industry sources. Iberia will operate the first XLR delivery flight from Hamburg to Madrid on October 30th, 2024. The flight will take approximately two hours and 30 minutes. Iberia's A321 XLR will be configured in a two-class configuration with 182 seats, including 14 business class seats and 168 economy class seats. The airplane's new airspace cabin offers wide body-like seating. The aircraft has been designed to maximize commonality, with the A321LR and the rest of the A320neo family while also making the necessary changes to enable ultra-long range with optimized payload. The changes include a fixed rear center tank, RCT, and additional landing gear to accommodate an increased maximum takeoff weight, MTAU, of up to 101 tons, and improved tail flaps to maintain the same takeoff performance and engine thrust as the current A321neo. The RCT is optimized to carry more fuel than the previously optional additional center tank, ACT, while taking up less space in the cargo hold. This change allows the aircraft to have more space for cargo and baggage on long-haul routes. Due to delivery delays and supply chain issues, airlines that have ordered the XLR will be forced to make frequent network adjustments. The entry into service EIS process has not been easy, with Airbus's development and customer service teams going through a lot of hoops over more than four years. The aircraft was certified in July with Florian Guillermet, CEO of ASA, handing it over to the Isabel Bloy, chief engineer of the A321 XLR. Airbus has since received more than 550 orders from various airlines around the world, with India's largest low-cost carrier, Indigo, leading the order book with 69 aircraft. So far, aviation analysts and passengers have had mixed opinions. One group argues this would open up new long-haul routes previously served by narrow-body aircraft, while others argue it would make it feasible for passengers to sit in less comfortable seats on eight-hour trips. Delivering an aircraft is a huge team effort, relying on the dedicated work of the customer program, manufacturing, flight operations, and delivery teams. So how does the whole process work? Once the customer places an order for an aircraft, they are assigned a customer program manager who oversees the entire aircraft development process. In this role, they are responsible for the on-time quality and cost delivery of all aircraft in the customer's XLR fleet. From the signing of the purchase agreement through to the transfer of ownership. Once the purchase agreement is signed, the airline will request customization of the aircraft. This includes the selection of systems and cargo options, exterior paint, cabin design, and more. Given that the XLR is a new aircraft variant, initial customization requests will often require more collaboration than usual. Longer flights on a single aisle aircraft bring new operational requirements, catering for example. We had to find the right balance between onboard services, comfort, available space, and desired routes, said Marie-Pierre, one of the customer program directors. Once all these options have been agreed upon by Airbus, the customer and the equipment suppliers, supplied by the buyer, a contract detailing the modifications to the aircraft is signed and the design phase begins. Once the details of each aircraft have been confirmed, production can begin. Once the major components of the aircraft have been produced, they are taken to the final assembly line, FAL, for assembly. During this process, there are people responsible for integrating the XLR into the FLs in Hamburg, Toulouse, and Mobile, Alabama. They coordinate the progress of the first aircraft through the FALs and manage any significant changes driven by the new development process, ensuring that the FAL milestones are met on time. The FAL integration is led by a team of people, 
Their goal is to work closely with production to ensure the integration of the XLR into Hamburg's A321 Neo FLs and avoid any impact of this introduction on the final assembly line's serial production capabilities. So what are the main challenges of this task? XLR capabilities must be integrated directly into the assembly line as continuous production of the A321 Neo aircraft is underway on the line. After the first XLR aircraft passed the FAL, there was one more hurdle before it could fly, the FAL Operational Test, or FOT for short. Justin Morker, responsible for integrating the XLR into the FAL in Hamburg, explains, the FOT meeting is a technical and conformity milestone required to obtain the clearance for ground and flight PATM, Production A Aircraft Test Manual, activities. This includes the opening of the Airbus logbook and the issuance of the permit to fly. If the FOT is passed, the aircraft advances to the flight line stage. In Hamburg, Janis von Hein is Head of Maintenance Engineering, Planning and Logistics for the A320 Family Customer Line. His team of maintenance engineers and technical planners are responsible for preparing all documentation, material, and work orders for each FOT, and they also work on the flight line stage, which is when all ground and flight tests that are necessary before delivery are completed. As with all new aircraft types, the XLR was closely followed through the first production process and everything was tracked by the industrial and technical teams, says Janice. The development and customer teams work closely together to ensure that all the modifications were installed on the first customer aircraft. This is always challenging, but it is essential to ensure the aircraft's maturity when they hand it over to the airline customer. By working together, the team was successful in delivering the FOTs on time. Once the aircraft makes its way through the flight line, there is an industrial handover and the aircraft moves to a delivery center. The customer arrives on site to complete the technical acceptance process and the title transfer. This is the stage where you get to see customer satisfaction firsthand, when they see their new aircraft cabin and livery for the first time, explains Marie Pierre. Five years of effort went into preparing these first customer versions of the XLR, and seeing their first flights makes it all worthwhile. Over the years, Airbus has implemented major upgrades and modifications to all of its passenger aircraft products in the spirit of continuous improvement to increase their capabilities and value to airlines. Soon, the A321 XLR will offer airlines the flexibility of a single aisle aircraft for both point-to-point -point operations up to 4,700 nautical miles, as well as high-density short-haul routes offering a standard combination of premium, premium economy and economy classes, while consuming 30% less fuel than its predecessor. For this new member of the A320 family, the technical design changes go deep into the aircraft's architecture and structural systems, impacting virtually every ATA chapter. Examples include the A321 XLR's new single-slot inboard flaps, upgraded flight control systems, upgraded landing gear and brakes, a new fuel system, a new water and waste system, and an improved cabin heating system for long-range operations. Most importantly, the aircraft features a completely new center fuselage incorporating a 12, 900-liter rear center tank RCT, a new dedicated fuel system, a new fire-resistant fiber reinforced composite material in the lower skin, and a new larger and reinforced belly fairing. This belly fairing, combined with the RCT structural design, allows the aircraft to sustain emergency belly landing conditions. Furthermore, fitted with skid pads, the extended belly fairing also acts as a cushion to allow the aircraft to glide until it comes to a safe stop. To date, three dedicated test aircraft have completed a total of approximately 1,450 hours of flight testing, over 510 flights, as well as ground testing. Up to approximately 4,500 airline technical documents have been produced for the first customers in preparation for their EIS. The Airbus A321 XLR marks a new chapter in aviation, blending long-haul capabilities with the efficiency of a narrow-body aircraft. With Iberia leading its inaugural delivery, the XLR is set to transform the airline industry by opening new point-to-point -point routes and offering airlines greater operational flexibility. Despite delays and supply chain challenges, Airbus has successfully navigated the complexities of certification and production. The aircraft's innovative features offer an enhanced passenger experience while reducing fuel consumption by 30%. As more airlines integrate the XLR into their fleets, 
Travelers can look forward to more direct flights and sustainable operation. However, opinions remain divided on the comfort of extended flights on a single aisle plane. As the aircraft begins service, Airbus focus on continuous innovation ensures that the A321 XLR is well positioned to meet evolving market demands and shape the future of air travel.